Wherefore I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim, and see, and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. To all the strangers and Gentiles that proclaim to serve the Most High, as well as to every Israelite that have returned to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, what is the everlasting covenant? What are the conditions to the everlasting covenant? In the beginning, the Most High created the first man and the first woman. Both of their names were Adam. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. Once the Most High gave the first Adam the laws to the garden, the Most High brought all the animals to Adam to name them. Once Adam noticed that he didn't have a counterpart like all the animals, the Most High made the female Adam and brought her to Adam. The first man, Adam, said, This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman because she was taken from a man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. The female Adam was called woman. Once Adam and the woman sinned in the garden, they were removed from the garden. The holy angel Michael was the one who removed Adam and the woman from the garden. Adam and the woman transgressed the laws the Most High gave to them. They were no longer allowed to stay in the garden. The Most High banished them from paradise and placed them in this earth. The Satans and the rest of the fallen angels dwell in this earth as well. After Adam and the woman was removed from the garden, Adam changed the woman's name. Adam said to the woman, you are the mother to all living, and he called her Eve. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Because of the alteration done to the scriptures in the Bible from the high level workers of iniquity and religion, the scriptures in the Bible does not talk about Adam and Eve after the fall. A lot of people are not aware of the covenant the Most High made with Adam to save him and the righteous of his seed. The scriptures in the Bible does not mention that Adam and Eve repented from their sin. Because they repented and gave a sacrifice to the Most High, the Most High through his holy angel said to Adam, Because you have shed your blood and offered your blood as a sacrifice, I will shed my blood to save you. Then Adam and Eve took stones and placed them in the shape of an altar, and they took leaves from the trees outside the garden, with which they wiped from the face of the rock the blood they had spilled. But that which had dropped on the sand, they took together with the dust wherewith it was mingled, and offered it upon the altar as an offering unto God. Then Adam and Eve stood under the altar and wept thus entreating God, forgive us of our trespass and our sin, and look upon us with thine eye of mercy. For when we were in the garden, our praises and our hymns went up before thee without ceasing. Yet now look upon our blood, which is offered upon these stones, and accepted at our hands, like the praise we used to sing unto thee at first, when in the garden. And Adam began to make more requests unto God. But I will, when I shall come down from heaven, and shall become flesh of thy seed, and take upon me the infirmity from which thou sufferest. Then the darkness that came upon thee in this cave shall come upon me in the grave. 
when I am in the flesh of thy seed. And I, who am without years, shall be subject to the reckoning of years, of times, of months, and of days. And I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men in order to save thee. The Most High made a covenant with Adam to save him and the righteous of his seed. When the time set by the Most High to save Adam and his seed arrive, it would be the end of this age. The time set by the Most High was five days and a half which equal to 5,500 years. Israelites, it is important for you to know the events that took place in between the authorized version of the scriptures. Remember, you're reading the authorized version of the scriptures, not the true preserved writings of our ancestors. Every version of the Bible have a disclaimer stating, authorized. I encourage everyone to use discernment. Ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of discernment when reading the scriptures. You will also need the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. I've noticed a lot of Israelites are reading the altered scriptures word for word, line by line, and front to back, just like they're reading a book. If you do this, you will be confused. The Bible is not your average book that you read front to back. The Bible is not in chronological order. The events mentioned in the scriptures are not in the order they happened. There's a lot of prophecy that haven't been fulfilled. In addition, there's a lot of missing books. The Satans used the workers of iniquity to add and remove from the scriptures to fit the high level workers of iniquity and in religion's narrative of the scriptures. The book of Maccabees said they would do this as well as the Bible. The Bible warned us not to add or remove from the scriptures. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. By now, we all should know the workers of iniquity did as their hearts desire and tampered with the scriptures to give the wicked a happily ever after. The covenant the Most High made with Adam to save him and his seed is not spoken of in the Bible. The beast religion do not talk about important information such as this. A lot of people don't know what a covenant is. A covenant is an agreement. If the people knew and understand that the Most High made a covenant with Adam to save him and his seed, everyone in religion would understand the everlasting covenant as well as to why the scriptures are centered around salvation and the Israelites. Covenants can be transferred from one generation to the next and from person to person. In every generation, the Most High raised a person to transfer the everlasting covenant to. After the flood, the Most High chose Shem. Noah referred to the Most High at that time as the God of Shem. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. The Israelite bloodline did not exist during Shem's generation. Therefore, the Most High was the God of Shem. Everyone needs to understand that every nation had their own God they worship and serve. The Israelites had the Most High. Prior to some Gentiles worshiping the Most High, they worship Moloch, Baal, and many other little gods. The God of our fathers, the God of Israel, is the one true God. The Most High want all nations to serve him. Many of the descendants of Adam worship fallen angels as gods. Mizraim is a very good example. They worship many fallen angels. Everyone knows about the gods of Egypt. The Canaanites are another example from the seed of Adam that worship all sorts of little gods that were abominable in the sight of the one true God, the Most High. 
When the Most High gave the Israelites the land of Canaan for a possession, he said he would not make any covenant with the inhabitants on that land. He ordered his people, the Israelites, to destroy the Canaanites. Some of the tribes did not destroy the Canaanites, but dwell with them. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. Today, religion made it seem as if everyone served the Most High. The other nations had their God they served. They've always made sacrifice to their idol gods. A lot of the Gentile nations hang on to their gods until this day. That is why in religion there's various faith and beliefs. Laban is Rebekah's brother. Rebekah is Jacob's mother. Laban and Rebekah are relatives of Abraham. Laban observed a different custom from Abraham. When Jacob wanted to marry Rachel, Laban said it's not their tradition for the younger to marry before the oldest child. Because of this custom, Leah was given to Jacob for a wife first, and later Rachel was given to Jacob for a second wife. Laban and Abraham are relatives, but they had different customs. Also, they served different gods. When Jacob was leaving Laban's house, his daughter Rachel stole his gods. Laban came after them wanting to have his gods back. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. And now, though thou wouldst needs be gone, because thou saw longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid. For I said, Peradventure thou wouldst take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. Before our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. Despite Laban being related to Abraham, he had different customs, traditions, beliefs, and gods from Abraham. Also, Abraham's father served many gods as well. The scriptures reveal Abraham destroyed all of his father's gods. Abraham and his father did not worship nor serve the same God. Every nation had their own gods. All the nations that don't serve the Most High are against the Most High. You will find select individuals from various nations that choose to serve the Most High. These individuals are the people the scriptures call strangers. The strangers are non-Israelites from various bloodlines that truly serve the Most High by forsaking their idols to worship the God of Israel. The Most High loved the strangers and welcomed the strangers. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Because the other nations had their own gods that they serve, the Most High identified himself with the people he selected to show himself strong through. After the generation of Shem passed away, the Most High found someone else to transfer the covenant he first made with Adam that transferred to Shem. Abram was the man the Most High selected to transfer the covenant. Remember, covenants can be transferred from generation to generation and from person to person. And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face. And God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Once the Most High transferred the covenant to Abram, he changed his name to Abraham. Abraham means a father to many nations. The Most High is now known as the God of Abraham during Abraham's generation. 
Despite the Most High selecting Abraham to transfer the covenant, all of Adam's seed who are righteous have the opportunity to be saved. However, the covenant was transferred to Abraham to uphold the covenant. In order for the Most High to fulfill his promise through the covenant, it must be transferred from generation to generation to remain valid. When the time came for Abraham to transition to the afterlife, the covenant was transferred to Isaac. The Most High said to Abraham and Sarah that Isaac was the one he selected to do his will. And Abraham had other children. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Israelites, do you see how the covenant is transferring from one generation to the next and from person to person? Again, the other nations are not excluded, but the Most High chose a select family to show himself strong through. Once the generation of Isaac was transitioning to the afterlife, the Most High selected Jacob and his descendants to uphold the everlasting covenant. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Once Jacob received the covenant, the Most High worked through Jacob to build a nation to show himself strong through. The Most High was no longer looking for a person to transfer the everlasting covenant. The Most High selected Jacob's bloodline to transfer the everlasting covenant permanently. Everyone who descend from Jacob were selected for a purpose. How did the Most High transfer the covenant to the Israelite bloodline? When the Israelites multiply into a great nation in Mizraim, the land of Ham, before the Israelites inherited the promised land, all of the descendants of Jacob living at that time, all the leaders of the tribes, the elders, the men, the women and children, the Most High gathered them to him. The Most High also made it known in the scriptures that he did not only gather the generation that stood before him. You and I stood with our ancestors as well as our children and the generations after us. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. The entire Israelite bloodline stood before the Most High and established a covenant with the Most High. On that great day, the Most High descend on Mount Sinai, transferred the everlasting covenant from Jacob to his entire descendants. Ye stand this day, all of you before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water, that thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God, and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, as he hath said unto thee, and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The Most High made several covenants with his people. 
After establishing the everlasting covenant, the Most High gave to Moses the commandments the Israelites should follow. The commandments are the laws set by the Most High on how the people of the Most High should conduct themselves. The Israelites said to Moses, everything the Most High said through you, we will do, sealing the covenant. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord hath said, will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. And rose up early in the morning, and builded an altar under the hill, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings, and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood, and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant, and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord hath said will we do and be obedient israelites i want to make sure you heard the scriptures our ancestors and us said to the most high all that you said we will do and be obedient and he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people and they said all that the lord hath said will we do and be obedient our ancestors knew fully what was required of them Moses read the book of the covenant to our ancestors, and they all agreed to uphold the covenant. Although this generation was not alive at the time, the Most High made it clear that the covenant was with us also. Again, just because the everlasting covenant was transferred to the Israelites, it doesn't exclude the other indigenous black nations that are descendants of Adam. The strangers that dwell among the Israelites were also at Mount Sinai when the Most High established a covenant with his people. The strangers stood before the Most High as well. The Israelites are a peculiar people selected to fulfill a purpose. When the Most High transferred the covenant to the Israelites, all of Jacob's seed stood before the Most High and made an agreement for the Most High to be our God and we would be his people. Once the covenant was transferred, the Most High is now called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name for ever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Until this day, the Most High is known as the God of Israel or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, the other Gentile bloodlines and nations had their own gods they served. The Most High was our God. The Most High never excluded anyone from serving Him. He preferred that you serve Him than useless idols. Currently, it is the duty of all Israelites to uphold the everlasting covenant. What is the covenant? The covenant started with the Most High promising to save Adam and his seed. Once the Most High transferred the covenant to Abraham, he promised to make Abraham a father to many nations, as well as to be a God to him and his descendants. The Most High also gave to Abraham the land of Canaan for a possession. Israelites, the everlasting covenant that never changed nor expired, revealed that the Most High would be our God and we would be his people. When our ancestors, as well as you and I, stood before the Most High to establish the covenant, was Jesus there? Did you make a covenant with Jesus when you stood at Mount Sinai with our ancestors to make the Most High our God and we would be his people? And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. No, Jesus was not there. It was the Most High and his people making an agreement. On the great day the Most High made the covenant with the Israelites, he gave them the laws. The Most High made sure to enforce one law in particular. The Most High said repeatedly to our ancestors not to make gods of silver and gold. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. 
The Most High made it known not to create any graven images of anything in the waters, on earth, and in the heavens. The Most High don't want his people to create any other gods. The Most High don't want his people to bow down to any other gods. The Most High said he will not share his glory with anyone. He made it known that the covenant is between himself and his people. There were no one else when the covenant was established. The everlasting covenant is still in effect until this day. When the Israelites made the golden calf idol soon after making the covenant, how did the Most High react? And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath, and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidst unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it for ever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. The Most High had to repent for what he wanted to do to the Israelites when they created the golden calf idol and worshipped it. The Most High said he would not share his glory with anyone. The Most High made it known that he is our Savior and the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared, and have saved, and I have shown, when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Israelites, did you hear the scriptures? Some Israelites can hear, but they don't have an ear to hear what the word of the Most High is saying to them. The Most High made it known in the scriptures that there is no one beside him. He is our king, our savior, our deliverer, our everything. The everlasting covenant he made with us declared the same thing. How come in this generation, the people of the Most High is giving his glory to another? Everywhere you go in the beast culture, everyone is thanking Jesus. Why is the people of the Most High worshiping and praying to Jesus? The heathen's God is not our God. Jesus is a pagan God created to give the heathens salvation. If you go back to the beginning, when Satan said to Adam, the Most High did not grant him salvation, but gave Adam salvation. Satan said he would wage war with Adam. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant, and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant, and will not deliver me out of my hardship, nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. The children the watchers created with the daughters of men were judged and they did not receive salvation either. All the Satans and their children do not have salvation. Their fate is sealed. The lake of fire is their final resting place. The lake of fire was not intended for any of Adam's descendants. But because there are people who descend from Adam that worship and follow the Satans in the beast system, they have joined the Satans and their children to the lake of fire. Every day hell is enlarging itself. The seed of Adam are becoming more wicked day by day. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, 
and their glory, and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. The heathens God, Jesus Christ, was created to give the heathens and all who uphold the beast culture's lawless way of life, salvation. The seed of the fallen are the only group of mankind that believe they can still kill and destroy and the Most High will bless them. The seed of the fallen robbed the Native Americans who so happened to be indigenous black people of their land. Then they created Thanksgiving to give thanks to their God for conquering the natives. They made you believe Thanksgiving is to give thanks to the Most High, but the truth is they are giving thanks for slaughtering the natives. The scriptures said they would slay you and hold themselves not guilty. The scriptures went on to say they will call themselves blessed for the wealth they have stolen from you. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. We live in a society that do not uphold the laws statutes and commandments of the most high and these same people believe the most high will save them despite of their unrepented ways of life the seed of the fallen know their fate that is why they have enmity towards you who was given salvation they created a god that will come to save the world from sin made you forsake the everlasting covenant with the most high to believe in that false god this god jesus has become a snare to you they did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Remember, Satan imitates everything the Most High does. He deceived himself, and he is deceiving the people lost in the beast culture. The other species of mankind and some indigenous black people think like Satan. You can't disobey the Most High to accomplish your will and turn around and think the Most High will bless you. Satan believed the way he could get redemption was to kill Adam and his seed. There would be no one to inherit the earth according to his logic. Satan thought the Most High would be in want of him and restore him back to his kingdom if Adam and his seed didn't exist. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone, so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then be in want of me and he will restore me to it with my hosts. The Holy One of Israel, the Most High, would not bless wickedness. The Most High don't bless sin. Only the workers of iniquity bless those who are lawless. The Satans created religion to disconnect the Israelites from the Most High. The Israelites and indigenous black people are the number one worshipers of Jesus Christ. Serving Jesus in religion hasn't changed your conditions. The other species of mankind don't live the kind of life that you live. They are on top of the food chain, yet they don't serve Jesus like you do. You who worship, pray, praise, and serve Jesus can't seem to put your enemies under your foot. The Most High gave you power to trot down scorpions, serpents, and the entire kingdom of darkness, and by no means can they hurt you. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Israelites, you can't use the devices of Satan to destroy Satan. The scripture said, can Satan cast out Satan? The Israelites and indigenous black people can't seem to trample the scorpions and serpents the Most High gave them power over. Why is that? Satan cannot cast out Satan. If he could, how his kingdom stand? Jesus promised to take away your sins. If Jesus took away your sins, how come the curses plague your life? Why did the Most High say he would punish you for all your iniquities? Also, judgment starts with you. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. But the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Religion said Jesus and the Father are the same. 
How come he can't help you when your enemies come against you? What is preventing him from helping you if he forgave you of all your sins? The Israelites in religion and the indigenous black people are dedicated to Jesus. Yet look at the life they live, full of curses, plagues, and oppression. Anyone who live a life of oppression, curses, and plagues like the Israelites and indigenous black people, are you sure the one that died for your sins forgave you? Jesus said he came to give you life, life more abundantly. Many of you serve and establish a covenant with Jesus, yet your life is not living up to what Jesus promised you. Why is your life this way if you're a repentant servant and follower? Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not and whom he had not given unto them. Israelites, the Most High said, do not make any covenant with the heathens and their gods. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. The Israelites and indigenous black people ignored the Most High and made a covenant with the ultimate idol God, Jesus. Now the Most High is honoring the covenants you made with the idol God. Remember, the Most High honor all covenants. Israelites, how did the heathens influence you to forsake the Most High to follow their gods? Religion said if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you would obtain everlasting life. When Israelites and indigenous black people accepted Jesus, they established a covenant with the heathens, idol God. The people of the Most High did exactly what the Most High commanded them not to do. When you accepted the heathens, God, Jesus, and the others, you forsook the everlasting covenant the Most High made with you. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Israelites, did you notice that Jesus will give you everlasting life if you believe in him, and the Most High made an everlasting covenant with you? Everything the Most High does, Satan imitates. Israelites, there was no need for you to establish a covenant with the heathens and their gods. The everlasting covenant the Most High made with you already granted you salvation. You didn't need to accept any God as your Lord and Savior to receive salvation. The Most High promised Adam that he would save him and the righteous of his seed. The heathens tricked you into serving their gods. They made their false God appear to be the Most High in religion. The heathens don't serve the Most High. The Israelites have forsaken the Most High for the gods made of wood and stone. When you accepted Jesus as your Savior and God, you traded your glory for the lesser. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. The Israelites and the indigenous black people are the only people who trade the glorious promises the Most High made to them for the crumbs from the heathens they admire. The heathens and their idol God have treated you less than human, yet they are the ones not fully human. Israelites, you have to be careful with the covenants you make with the heathens and their gods. The heathens serve devils. They do not serve the Most High. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Some Israelites have taken the idol God of the heathens, transformed that God black, and continue to worship the idol. Israelites, the deception is deeper than you know. The Holy One of Israel made his people in his image and likeness. Israelites, do not mistake the Holy One of Israel for the one the Most High set over his people and would deliver his people at the appointed time. They are two different entities. The awakening wouldn't be happening if the people of the Most High didn't need to wake up. The doctrines in religion are false. That is why the Most High is calling his people out of religion. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. The way the heathens taught you about salvation is wrong. The one that will save you is a servant of the Most High, just like you and me. 
That is why he said for you to worship the father. Everything you need comes from the father. The Messiah will carry out the will of the father. Religion taught you to worship the Messiah. You shouldn't worship the Messiah, but the most high only. You establish a covenant with the most high. Israelites, whenever the most high did a great miracle in your life, did he come off his throne to do the miracle or did he not send someone or one of his messengers to perform the miracle? Likewise, Israelites, the most high will save his people and he will use the prince over Israel to deliver his people. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Have you noticed in the testament of the fathers we've read, none said for you to worship the Messiah. They all said, honor Levi and Judah. Levi said to the angel that spoke with him and opened the gates of heaven for him. According to the scriptures, only the Messiah had the keys to the kingdom. The testament of Levi referred to him as an angel. Levi asked the angel, what is your name so that he can call upon him during tribulation? The angel of the Lord said he is the angel that intercedes for the nation of Israel, just like the Messiah intercede for the people of the Most High in the scriptures. Levi went on to say that he will bless the most high and the angel that intercede for our people. And I said to him, I pray thee, O Lord, tell me thy name that I may call upon thee in the day of tribulation. And he said, I am the angel who intercede for the nation of Israel, that they may not be smitten utterly for every evil spirit attacketh. And after these things, I awake. And bless the Most High and the angel who intercedeth for the nation of Israel and for all the righteous. Levi differentiate the Most High from the angel that intercede for our people. The book of Daniel said Michael would stand up at the time of tribulation to deliver our people. Israelites, the deception is deeper than you know. Go ask the Most High for confirmation if you're unsure. I tried to tell you about the prince over Israel. Some heard me and many didn't. You all have to work out your own salvation. I did my part. The one religion called Jesus is not the most high or the Messiah. You should run from that idol God and all the doctrines concerning him. That idol came in his own name and he is the savior of the beast system. He has an appearance like the children of the fallen angels. He only blessed those that look like him. Run from that idol God. Do not forsake the everlasting covenant for that idol God or any other versions of him in religion and in the awakening. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Religion said that the old covenant was fulfilled when Jesus walked the earth. The everlasting covenant indicate that the Most High would save Adam and the righteous seed of Adam. The everlasting covenant reveal how the Most High would save Adam and his seed when the five days and a half period is over. The Most High said when he saved his people, it would be the end of the world. Then will I in mercy save thy soul and the soul of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. Jesus, whom religion say is the Messiah, he came and the end of the world didn't happen. The Most High said to Adam that when he saved him and his seed, it would be the end. The everlasting covenant state that the Most High would save the righteous. If the everlasting covenant was fulfilled, how come the righteous is still here waiting to be saved? Israelites, you must ask the high level workers of iniquity and religion to support their doctrines. The book of Isaiah said the inhabitants of the earth have transgressed the laws and changed the ordinance. The alterations was done in religion. The Most High said he would make a new covenant. What is the new covenant? The Most High said he will make a new covenant with Judah and the house of Israel, his people. The new covenant state that the Most High will put his laws into our hearts. The same laws religion said was done away with. The new covenant said he would be our God and we would be his people. The new covenant didn't say anything about Jesus. 
For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Israelites, take the time in the awakening to get to know the Most High. You were far from the Most High in religion. Religion is idolatry and sorcery. The Most High do not live in temples built by man's hands. The awakening is giving you the opportunity to establish a personal relationship with the Most High. Through your relationship with the Most High, you will begin to know the Father. Israelites, do not forsake the everlasting covenant for the idols of the heathens. There is nothing this world can offer you that could replace what the Most High has prepared for those who walk uprightly. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Israelites, you must go back to when it was you and the Most High to see the hands of the Most High operating in your life. I am a living testimony of one who go to the Father, pray to the Father, and worship the Father. The Most High has blessed me in ways that many of you have seen. When you begin to call on the Most High, you will begin to see the hands of the Most High operating in your life. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You will see how the Most High will smite down your enemies and make them your footstool. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. In order to see the hands of the Most High in your life, return to serve the Most High in the Spirit and in truth. There is no other way to serve the Most High but in the Spirit and in truth. Give the heathens back their gods. The time hath come for you to know that you are a peculiar people. You're not like everyone else. Return to serve the Most High and uphold the everlasting covenant. The covenant stand until this day. Don't wait until it's too late to grab hold of the covenant. The Most High is calling his people. Can you hear his call? The Most High said, my sheep knows my voice and they follow me. Israelites, are you following the Holy One of Israel or the bust down version of him in religion? Today you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger, and in my fury, and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart, and one way, that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, and I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul.